Where are SpaceX's limits? Well, this is the question even the company's founder, Elon Musk, I guess, won't be able to answer. Because he and SpaceX always create breakthroughs time and time again that make rocket enthusiasts like us overwhelmed. From the Falcon rocket line to the world's largest and most powerful rocket starship, from exclusive reuse methods to operational approaches that we've only seen in sci-fi movies. So, what's next? Don't wait any longer. Let's get into it right now in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is already the world's largest rocket, standing at a height of 121 meters. The rocket gives us a majestic sense, resembling a skyscraper made up of 40 stacked African elements. However, for Elon Musk, that's still not enough. He has even greater ambitions for his darling. We've got a version 3 ship design that'll stretch even taller, probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done. Maybe 150 meters at the end in length. So yeah, be even taller than it is currently. With a height of 150 meters, V3 will be 25% taller than V1. Based on previous speculation, version 2 is expected to be extended by 10% to reach 132 meters in a fully stacked configuration, meaning V3 will be about 20 meters taller than V2. Honestly, Elon Musk or SpaceX hasn't provided an in-depth analysis of these two newly announced Starship generations. However, with completely new names assigned, significant changes may be anticipated. Some potential changes could involve the implementation of new types of domes, possibly leading to modifications in the size of the domes at the front and rear optimizing space for fuel storage or increasing the capacity of the payload bay. In terms of payload capacity, the new version of Starship will increase its lift capability from about 100 tons to over 200 tons per flight, according to Musk. To grasp the scale of this achievement, one can imagine that the cargo capacity of Starship is equivalent to the payload capacity of three Saturn V rockets, which weighed 118 tons into orbit and about 12 times that of a space shuttle. In terms of fuel, an extended version of Starship may also increase the fuel storage capacity. Essentially, the advantage of scaling up a rocket lies in the favorable relationships between the weight of an empty rocket and the volume of fuel it can carry. As the rocket size increases, the volume of the fuel tanks can grow significantly without a proportional increase in empty weight. We're talking about Starship Stage 2, but to maintain this ratio, the Super Heavy also needs to have a greater height. This allows for more efficient fuel utilization. Additionally, playing with engine size and optimizing the thrust-to-fuel consumption ratio contributes to these benefits. By increasing the number of engines, you can achieve a better balance, making it more efficient to lift heavier payloads. For instance, if one engine can lift 100 pounds of payload, three engines working together can lift more than 300 pounds. This is because multiple engines can be tuned to work in concert more effectively than a single engine alone maximizing the overall efficiency of the launch. That's why both Starship V2 and V3 will see an increase in the number of Raptor engines, coupled with progressively more powerful variants of the Raptor engine. As of now, the Raptor V3 engine for Starship's V2 is SpaceX's latest version, producing a thrust of approximately 269 tons, representing an 18% improvement in power compared to the Raptor 2 engine. Surely, next, they'll research and produce Raptor V4 for Starship V3, and it's hard to believe just how much more powerful it could become. The decision to scale up and enhance the capabilities of SpaceX and Elon Musk for the Starship rocket is truly an ongoing effort. This is certainly not beyond SpaceX's capabilities, as some might think. This remarkable example of successful scaling up is evident in the transition from the Falcon 1 to the Falcon 9. While the Falcon 9 boasts a more efficient upper stage, this improvement alone doesn't fully account for the substantial performance leap from its predecessor. The Falcon 9 is only 8.26 times heavier than the Falcon 1, yet it can carry a payload that is 20 times heavier with only 10 times the thrust. Although it benefits from a more efficient upper stage engine, the Falcon 9 stands as a testament to the advantages of scaling up rocket technology. Much of the design architecture from the Falcon 1 was systematically modified and enhanced for the Falcon 9. Furthermore, the benefits of scaling up continue with the Falcon 9's V1.1 upgrade. The propellant mass fraction sees improvement and the payload capacity increases by 53%, while the gross mass sees only a 51% jump.
Some of this improvement can be attributed to a higher specific impulse ISP, but having more thrust per square meter of frontal area certainly contributes. In essence, the Falcon 9 becomes more efficient both in terms of cost per kilogram and payload mass fraction as it grows in size. Therefore, the possibility of the already giant Starship becoming even larger is a story that SpaceX is undoubtedly capable of realizing. While it's still unclear whether it'll become orbital refueling stations holding hundreds of tons of propellant or a vehicle transporting thousands of people and goods to the moon and Mars, an extended Starship will bring numerous advantages to SpaceX's and Elon Musk's ambitions more than ever before. And to meet such large-scale prototypes, a simple high bay and a few tents will no longer be suitable. Concerns about foreign objects causing damage during rocket production are a real issue, potentially leading to the elimination of prototypes. That's why SpaceX is expanding its starbase, with SpaceX COO Gwynne Shotwell stating that the factory will be capable of producing a new starship every 72 hours. SpaceX is already working on a massive star factory production facility to increase starship production, meaning that once it's fully up and running, SpaceX can immediately begin mass production of Starship V3. Continuous developments and upgrades are necessary for an unprecedented program like Starship. SpaceX is also constructing a second Starship launch pad at Starbase in South Texas. We're going to be launching a lot, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we're launching from another tower, so two towers is important, Musk said. For Artemis missions, SpaceX will likely need to fly Starships nearly as often as they're launching Falcon 9 rockets, multiple times per week, to aggregate methane and liquid oxygen propellants into a storage depot in Earth orbit. Then, the human-rated Starship lander will launch into low Earth orbit, link up with the depot, and receive its full propellant load to head for the moon. NASA's astronaut crews will depart Earth on NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, then link up with a Starship lander in orbit around the moon. Starship will ferry two of the four-person Artemis crew from Orion to the lunar surface, then back to Orion for the ride home. In summary, during the next period, Starship only needs to perform well in its third flight, which includes achieving orbit and demonstrating the ability to transfer fuel within the Starship tanks. This would be a technical leap similar to Portugal's Caravel. Not to say the applications will be identical. But if successful, it will not only open up the possibility of closer access to our solar system than ever before, but also offer much more. Only time will tell, but it's bound to happen. The entire process of developing planning space missions will be revolutionized as the cost of space utilization decreases by a factor of 100. In fact, the entire concept of how we think about space exploration will have to change. SpaceX will not be alone in providing this service. Other players will attempt to join in, either to get a piece of the pie or because they require different solutions, different types of fuel, different functionalities of Starship Phase 2. However, if SpaceX plays its cars right, they can maintain a monopoly on the launch and capture system for centuries, generating tons of money for the expanding space industry. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.